Yikes. It's almost six o'clock in the morning. Joe should be here any minute. And then we're heading off to the start. A little messy in here. Bike's ready. My backpack is ready. I just gotta throw on my armor. And we're ready. Well, it is six o'clock on the nose. And uh, still waiting for Joe. I'll give him another minute and then I'm gonna head over to his place and make sure he's not snoozing. Well, we all made it to the start. So before we go any further, let's meet the team. Ça roule. Super Dave, this is my bike. This is the last time this one will be off road. This is going to get sold. It's a one owner, highly cared for, looked after machine. Never dropped? Never, Never dropped. dropped. Never, ever, ever has it been dropped. It's in superb condition. Meticulously clean. <laughs> Super Dave. What can I say about Super Dave? He actually was planning on selling his bike right after this event. Dave didn't have too much experience. He'd ridden with us a few times last year. Dave would have a rough day. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> hey, this is Ivan. On the forums, it's uh, Sideways Control, which is a nickname that came from uh, the rally world, but car rally. So anyways. And what kind of bike you bring today? A modified KTM 690. So it's a... Uh, Modified with the KTM Basel rally kit. Lots of fuel capacity, lots of fun. You're not going to drop it today, are you? Oh, maybe. Why not? <laughs> yeah, we're part of the awesome players, apparently, so <laughs> something has to happen, obviously. Ivan, I'd never met before, but he seemed like a really nice guy. He had a very nice bike. And even though he had been involved with motorcycling for a while, I think he'd only been doing off-road for about a season or two. Tell us your name, if you remember. Chris. And tell us about your poor bike. My poor bike has been beaten into submission. And what is it? <laughs> it's broken. It's a broken HP2. I see you've gone for ultra lightweight. I have ripped off the front fender, destroyed a final drive, changed a final drive. And now you're ready to go? Shit on the seat a few times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go. If you've been watching our videos, you'll recognize Chris. He's one of those freaks of nature that makes an HP2 look like a regular size motorcycle. Doesn't like getting his little toes wet when we go off-roading. Joe, this is like the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot combined. You actually Cheers, showed everyone. up. So, tell us about, what did you bring today? Today I bought my brand new boots. No, your bike, so I don't care about your boots. should ride a lot better. <laughs> well, you got new pants? New pants, new boots. Yeah, but what about, what bike did but you bring? Same old riding technique. <laughs> On the X Challenge. On the X bike, yes. Joe was one of the original members of the Awesome Players, someone I've known for over 30 years. He's also our webmaster. Whatever shortcomings he has as a rider, he makes up for with his willingness to crash. Tell us your name, sir. Lurker Mark. I'm riding the Beast, the Pig, the Baleen. Yikes. This is nice because it makes a guy in an F800 feel svelte. Oh, lightweight, <laughs> aggressive and mean. So I'm telling Charlie I'll be following all you guys, having some fun. I've only ridden with Mark a few times, but it was easy to see the guy had some skills. Kind of a thinking man, I think, when it comes to riding. Very low key and uh, on one of the heaviest bikes out there. JP! I prefer to be with... You packed a lunch? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, so you got promoted, but now you've been demoted back to the Awesome Players Group. Yeah, uh, I, I regained my awesomeness. Remember, in the words <laughs> of Henrik, crash slowly. Crash slowly? That's our motto That's today. good words to live by. <laughs> JP was about as fresh as they get. The ink was still wet on his driver's license, which he'd only had for a few months. He had done a one-day off-road course, and uh, him and Super Dave would be competing for sweatiest man on the ride. My name is Serge, Serge Henry. And Serge, what did you bring as a ride today? What me brought what brought me here? Uh, that's the Ligue who brought me down here. That's his fault. <laughs> that's because of him. And what are you riding today? I'm riding the Hard 1200 GS Adventure. 2014 to be cool. Nice. I like it when someone brings a bike that makes my 800 look small. Uh, you know what? I'm going to work hard, but it's going to be fun. Another guy I'd never met before 
Serge would work very hard, and given the fact he had the biggest bike, and he also didn't have the most aggressive tires, what he did was pretty incredible. Serge is made of tough stuff. I'm a new awesome player. I'm a Ligurian. I ride a big moto. This beast. It's a 250 or 225? Yeah, it's a 225. That's a kilo? Yep. Some might call him Ligurian, some maybe Jonathan. To me, I think he'll always be the Viking. One of those guys who just stays on the gas whenever there's any doubt, and just an all-around nice guy. So here we are. This is the Awesome Players Off-Road Motorcycle Club group for the Class Seat 2015. We got an interesting mix of uh, F800 GSs, Super Tenair 1200s, an HP2, a couple of 690s, and one big 1200 GS. So uh, it should make for a pretty... Uh, Pretty interesting day. And are you uh, prepared to be the group leader? I'm going to be leading from the back. <laughs> I got a new GPS, so I have no clue how to work it, so you probably don't want me in front. We also had Jason on his 690 in our group. The next thing on the agenda was the safety briefing. This is pretty standard. We get told of any last minute changes to the route. We also get our last of warnings about not being maniacs and what to do if somebody gets hurt. Here you can see Mark, he's one of the organizers. Him and his team do an incredible job. And uh, you can see the crew is pretty diverse here. We've got young and old, we've got men, women, Jason. He's not a woman, that's just a man bun. And Moto Internacional, the big BMW dealer, was the main sponsor. So uh, thank you, Mr. Charles Greff. We had our own little security briefing, which was really just about making sure everyone rode their own ride. And also, because we had such a wide range of skill levels, that people shouldn't be shy if they needed some help to get their bike through an obstacle. Chris took this time to demonstrate how he spent most of his uh, adolescence. Okay, I think I've videotaped this enough. You ready, Bill? I'm ready. You ready? Yep. Ready? Ready, ready? Ready, Freddy? Ready? Yep. Jason, you're not ready. So what? We got like half an hour to do That, you're ready, ready? As we were about to leave, I must admit I was a little anxious about this whole endeavor. I mean, I'm used to disappointing the guys I regularly ride with, but we had some new guys who might actually have expectations of some leadership, but the flag was about to drop, so there was no point in worrying about it anymore. Be safe. We we'll see you in the Paul West. Yes, yes. We'll be, we'll be there. We might be late, but we'll be there. <laughs> Actually, most of us would not make it to the lunch break, but you'll have to watch the video to see what happened. A lot of us also had intercoms for the first time. Okay, I'm following this arrow. After successfully navigating the parking lot, I made my first command decision. All right, you know what, Chris, take the lead, because I want to make sure that, you know, Mark's in the back and he doesn't have a GPS. As a group, the awesome players have participated in quite a few of these events over the last few years. We usually don't get too focused on finishing even. We tend to march to our own drum and, uh, you know, we like to stop and chat and goof a little more probably than a lot of the other teams. This time was a bit different since we had so many unknowns in our team and I think I was a little more worried about just making sure everyone got out of the woods. The Classic usually starts with a little bit of road work to get to the trails. This isn't a bad thing. This is one of the first rides of the season and everybody's a little rusty. So it's probably best to ease into it. We're here, we're here. Go, 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 go. The ride begins, the ride begins. All right. Yeah, somebody was doing some spinning. Oh, we got a culvert. JP's thinking about turning his ABS off. Good idea. The first section was nice and easy, perfect to get your motorcycle legs back, and then it dumped us back out on the pavement. Okay, we're all out of the trail. Nice to have the intercom so I can let Chris know up ahead that we've all cleared that junction. 
A lot of the guys on this ride had cameras. Here we're riding along with Ivan on his 690. Now we're back on my camera. You can see in the top left, I've uh, named all the cameras. Give her. We're riding along with Mark now on his Super 10. One thing I did notice before we left was that this bike did not have a huge amount of ground clearance. Did sound nice though. Now we're riding along with Ligurier on his. Ça va? I've edited out a lot of the road riding, but it was time to stop for our first break. Hot, man. Good. Not, Not too, bad, too hot yeah. yet. Yeah. Long, so. Come on, Jason. Three more, more than three shakes is playing with it. As you can see here, Ligurien is pretty well known with the local riders. The rest of us who don't have fiery red beards pass through the same group largely unnoticed. Before really getting into it, we made another quick stop to adjust tire pressure. Now I checked with my guys, they're good. Ça va? Yeah, everybody's happy. I must say that having the intercom on this event was really nice. And just in general, it's really added a nice new dimension to our rides. Super Dave. All right, hit it. One of the perks of the intercom is that all your buddies get to listen in on your singing. La, 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 la. Oh, it looks kind of mucky up there, boys. Here comes the 1200. Hey, my fan's on. Come on, come on, come on. There goes the rally, KTM. X challenge. 1200 Tenere, 690, 798, 1200 Tenere, and, and I, we all meet. Tail end, char, lead. Well, my fan's on. La, 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 la. I'm going to warn you right now, this is not going to be a short video. I'm really not interested in the kind of rock and roll montage stuff. I like to make something that, uh, when I watch it a couple of years down the road, really gives me a flavor for what the event was like back in the day. Here you can see the trails starting to get a little more interesting. We started to see a few hints of what was up ahead. Here you can see Mark uh, getting a little wiggly. This stuff was really greasy. Then the trail opened up, nice hard packed gravel, perfect for big bikes. Get on the throttle, have some fun. Then we were dumped back out onto a country road. There we're passing a guy from one of the other groups. He was by himself, so I'm not sure what the deal was. I think this might have been his riding partner right there waiting for him to catch up. This is a hydro line that is not on the big bike route. I think the uh, smaller bikes actually go through this section, but it was not for us. Taint on our route, boys! Everyone was shaking off the winter cobwebs, so we got on some looser gravel, but everyone was keeping their speed up. I know you, man. Hey! Norman, like at 277. I saw somebody left a sticker on my land, uh, that shit there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At a stop sign, I bumped into someone I knew who was riding in one of the other groups, Normand. Super nice guy. He's a teacher and an inventor, and I actually use his battery system uh, for my GoPro. Whoa! How do you drive this thing? Is that everybody in my group? The towns here use a lot of sand and gravel on these roads in the winter, and you can see that hump in the middle of my lane. That is just loose gravel. So the roads are actually slipperier than the trails this time of the year, and you gotta proceed cautiously. There's another group coming up behind you. Well, they're gonna catch up to you pretty damn quick. You may just wanna pull over. Pull over, let them go. Okay, yeah, let's, let's collect and then we'll let them pass. These guys look intent.
Okay, boys, keep going. I'll still tail in Charlie. Well, we were leaving Kansas, and things were going to start getting a lot more interesting. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Let's take a look at that on the Ligurien cam. I have no doubt that our friend here is a big believer of the old adage, when in doubt, gas it out. Well, I gotta say, the guy on the black Super 10 just power slid through that thing sideways. But he did it with flair. On the next decent uphill, JP hit a rock and kind of ran out of steam. Ligurien was able to sneak by on the left. But, thankfully, JP, with a little clutch abuse and some leg work, was able to get the 798 rolling again. Good work, good work. You're good. Keep in mind that uh, JP could count the number of times he'd been off-road on one hand. Give her! JP is on his game today, folks. On the next hill that was kind of similar, JP kept a little more speed, stayed up on the pegs, looked where he was going, and made it out. We're good, we're good. We're coming. I think everybody's having fun, boys. Give her, give her. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Huh? I'm hungry. You're what? I, I, uh, hungry. <laughs> Okay, we're going to stop soon. Chris! The intercoms we use use Bluetooth. And for a few moments, Chris was out of range because I wanted him to stop so the boys could have a snack. Christopher! Uh, let's have a little break up uh, once we hit a real road. I think some of the boys want a snack. When we hit a road, we're gonna stop. So far, I have to say, this leading from the back seemed to be working fine, especially with the comms, so I could stay in touch with Chris. One thing to keep in mind with our group is that pretty much everybody here would be capable of leading the group. Everybody except, I think, uh, Mark had a GPS, so uh, frequently on our own rides, we always take turns being in front. So I think in, in effect, I was really a group leader in name only. As you can see, the trail was getting a little more interesting and a little more slippery. You could, I don't know how well you could hear it there, but you can see there's a lot of clutch modulation going on. Because basically, if you just leave that clutch out and try to rock and roll the throttle, uh, the response time, for one thing, is too slow, and secondly, on that 800, once it gets spinning, it spins. Here we are, riding along with Super Dave on his F700. Now you're seeing uh, Chris's point of view up front in the lead. Super Dave on his bike was running, I believe, K60s, nah. which aren't the most aggressive tire. I think you're imagining it. Now we're riding along with Joe. Look far ahead. He's following the 1200 GS Adventure with Serge on it. Patience. Whoa! And down Serge went. Get a 180. Now before Mark following behind could get his side stand down, Joe was already en route to help Serge. That was spectacular, I must admit. <laughs> You can see the bum on the seat reverse technique, and with a little help, Serge was on his way once again. You can see Mark on the left of the frame trying to get through that same spot, and Mark went through a spot where there was no tire tracks and it looked solid, but as you can see, you get a 600 pound bike, solid better be cement. Here we are riding with Dave. The F700 is kind of a mixed bag on an event like this. 
Uh, you've got less ground clearance, so you uh, you tend to bang the old bottom of the engine a little more often. And you have that 19-inch front tire, so you don't have quite as good a selection of tires. The suspension is also not up to the mediocre standard of something like, let's say, an F800 GS. So you uh, you tend to get beaten up a little bit more. How you doing? The lower ground clearance can also jam you up when you get into a deep groove because you tend to snag the foot pegs and the sides of the engine in the groove while a guy on a on a taller bike like Joe on the X Challenge will just sail right through that section. And actually here Dave is telling Chris how he just bottomed out the front suspension a few times and got these big jarring slams right through the handlebars into his wrists. Ah, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Chris, who was in the lead, came around a corner, and all of a sudden we caught up to a group on smaller bikes. I'm guessing they either had a mechanical issue or had stopped for an extended break, because uh, these don't look like the kind of guys that we would catch up to for any other reason. Here we're riding with Ivan, and uh, Ivan, even though he didn't have a lot of experience off-road motorcycling was doing quite well. Chris came over a little culvert. It actually was sticking up quite a bit. And this will be another situation where, you know, guys on a bike with less ground clearance are probably going to have a little trouble. Here we see Dave coming up to it. What's your recommendation here? He was also on intercom. Dave managed to bounce his way over. Good recommendation, Chris. Yeah, dude, it's good. Because when you go on those downhills, if you can see you have room, don't just let the bike run down the hill. Don't get on that rear brake. Okay, I'll try that. As I mentioned, uh, JP here had probably been on five or six off-road rides. So he was definitely pretty fresh. But we were confident we could get him through this, even if we had to... Uh, slow down, push, or even ride his bike through a few sections. He was also on an F700 GS. I think the biggest factor of whether or not someone's going to get along with us on a ride like this is just whether or not they're going to be a complainer. No one really cares if you fall down or if you have trouble as long as you just don't whine about it. It was actually Ligorien who was stuck at the culvert. And that's just a case of not enough ground clearance. Nothing to do with uh, not knowing how to ride, obviously, in his case. But with a little tug on a crash bar, he was off. Then we saw this group pop by, and this was kind of an interesting thing. Relatively small bike. The guy actually dismounted and walked it through the little hole. And I remember thinking, that's smart. So of course, when it came our turn, we just said, ah, just drive over it. J'ai entendu les forces, con! Love the sound of that Super 10. We came to another minor obstacle and JP Got up on the pegs, went through, no problem. We had a little problem on the next hill climb, and here you can see Ligurien doing a little clutch modulation. He manages to make it up. Up ahead, Chris was starting to see that the trail was getting pretty rutted and mucky. And somehow, through the magic of the HP2, even with a Chris bald tire on the back, that thing always seems to be able to climb anything. I think maybe I should stop and give a hand. Super Dave wasn't having as much luck on the 700. And once that bike starts to tip over, yeah, it can be hard to keep it upright, but Dave managed to muscle it there. Not unless you see my rear wheel digging itself in. So you're trying to feed in the power. You don't want to get it spinning. So you're doing a lot of clutching here. Chris had walked back to give a hand and it's amazing how just a little tug on a crash bar 
helps you avoid digging that hole and spinning that rear tire and gets you going. Ivan made it through the same section on his 690 rally with uh, not too many issues. Here we see Joe waiting for his turn and Chris is trying to get Mark on the big Super 10 up that same hill. Mark didn't have very aggressive tires on his either. And that's the thing, when you get, uh, when you get a more compromised tire, this is where you're going to pay for that compromise. If you look at the back of the image, you'll see me trying to catch up and... Down I go. Riley, you know what? I have my camera going. Dave seemed quite pleased that I'd fallen down. Time for a little break. Every time I see a 1200 GS with a good rider on it just doing incredible stuff, and climbing things you don't think it would be possible to climb, it always blows me away. And I gotta say, this is the first time I've ever ridden with anybody who's been on the Super 10. Both Mark and Ligurien were impressive because I don't know what a Super 10 weighs, but it's it really does make an F800 feel like a feather. And they do sound good. You know, a parallel twin like the F800 just doesn't have that same V-twin sound. Now in this shot, look at Joe's skid plate. Oh, your skid plate is you can kind of see it flapping in the wind there. Yeah, you lost the bolt or something. So far, we haven't seen a lot of Jason on his 690, but here he comes, making short work of that section. Ivan's bike. Another 690, but a little too loud for my taste. That is style. JP tries to skirt the edges, and once he spun it, he was done. I didn't want to stop and lose momentum, but got a little sideways and almost clipped him. Sometimes the middle of the trail where the ruts are is actually a better choice because it's hard packed. You see those leaves on the side with no tire tracks and you think it's going to be a good choice and it just turns out to be muck. And once again, Chris doing tow truck duty. And then JP decides to take a rest. Wait, it's not on the... Ready? And with a little help from Chris, as well as a rider from another group, JP was on his way. Okay, uh, some players. I uh, don't remember your name. Sorry. The guy with HP2. Oh, uh, Chris. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See you later. I'm ready with you with the 9 950 about five or four years ago. Oh, yeah. Cool. The dual sport community is not that big, and the vast majority of people you meet are super nice. Even though we hadn't hit a real road, we decided to stop and do a little fueling up. And it's a good thing we did, because the next obstacle was going to be a doozy. Holy shit, boys. That's muddy. That's real mud. Yeah. It is black and stinky and not so good. Up ahead was a long, long stretch of mud crisscrossed by greased logs. And when the boys on the small bikes are having trouble, it's bad news. Is that bad? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's going to be bad. It's going to be very bad. It's going to be a pool fest. Yeah, yeah, that's why we have a douche rope. Yeah. There's always a few in the group. <laughs> As we watched the little bikes flounder, Mark and I tried to come up with an alternative plan. I can It'll take everybody. Yeah. Well, we don't have a choice. We're not going back. You're in the way of good video. The, the, the good news is there's a second mark on the on the track that says boo de. Yeah, boo de. <laughs> Chris could also see on the GPS that this was only supposed to be the first of two mud holes. I will try this. 
That's not good. Qu'est-ce que tu penses? Ça sera pas facile. Ça sera plus facile sur des grosses motos. <rire> C'est quoi vos motos? Et ta barrette? <rire> Douce. C'est pas grosse. la mienne, la grosse grosse, mais... Aïe, aïe, aïe. So, what do you think? This is party time. Uh... This is a warm-up today. Isn't it gonna be crazy? <laughs> yep. But first, some comedy. Whoa! <laughs> you all right? Okay. You all right? Maybe. You all right? Maybe. Always ask if the guy's all right before you laugh. Because let's face it, you don't want to be that guy. Chris was going to be our guinea pig. We had come up with a genius plan to try to bypass to the left and then at least you avoided having to go over these logs. What's up ahead where the other guy got stuck? Mark was up ahead doing the reconnaissance. And on the left, where the stick is? Okay. What? With our plan formulated, we sent in one of our top 10 guys. Didn't take us long to realize that this bypass there's a log there. Was not a great idea. One, two, three. There we go. We had to lift the front wheel out of this trench. And then it was time for the douche rope. And as you know, it's called the douche rope because uh, if you're on the end of it, that makes you the you know what. Up ahead was even a bigger hole. <laughs> the hole was so deep that when we all pulled, it just lifted the rear wheel of the HP2 straight up in the air. So, going through the middle was the right way to go. I don't think anyone else was going to try the bypass on the left. So Ivan came to lend me a hand. And with everybody pulling and two of us pushing, it just kept lifting the rear tire. So at that point, it was time to stick your hands down into the mud and lift the bike out. There was something down in that mud. And then the HP2 was out, only nine more bikes to go. Okay, we gotta do that differently for the next one because that's not gonna work. Another team had tried the bypass to the left and that looked worse. Somebody went way right on a small bike, but uh, that was not gonna work on an F700. Jason decided to show us how it was done. And yes, he had taken his helmet off, which is a no-no. But uh, by bouncing and popping and lurching, he made it through single-handed. Wow. Next would be Joe. Maybe I should have gone first, now I'm gonna look bad. <laughs> Right down the middle seemed like the best idea, and here we see Joe on the X-Challenge. Remember when I said those logs were greased? Well, that, my friend, is greasy. You got it. And now there was only seven bikes left to go. This was a cool bike. I think it was a Honda. I love that big headlight. Next, Ivan, 690. Stalled it, but he was through the worst of it. This was a guy in a KLR, man, and he really started it hopping. JP on the 798. 
And Lauchpa basically means giver in French. This was Super Dave on the F700. At this point, we'd been at this mud hole for quite some time, helping not just our own team members, but quite a few people from other teams. And uh, all of this can suck quite a bit of energy out of you. Some of the logs had loosened up a bit, so we were actually able to do a little track maintenance at this point. Then it was Serge's turn on the 1200 GS Adventure, and he was not shy with that throttle one bit. Nice to have friends. That is a big beast, and Serge is just the guy to ride it. Now we're riding along with Mark on the Super 10, and I told you Mark was a good rider, and he just went for it. I was at the other end watching this with some guys on small bikes, and I gotta tell you, their jaws were hanging down when they saw him muscle that thing over there. Here's a 640 adventure from another group who also found out how slippery those logs were. And on the left, you can see someone else who tried the bypass to the left with uh, not much success. Everyone had pretty much figured out at this point that there was no point trying to bypass it. You just had to go for it right down the middle. Next, it was my turn on the F800GS to give it a shot. I'm not sure if seeing everyone else helps or just psychs you out a bit and I was doing all right and then I mistimed a little clutch drop and spun it this is when it's real nice to not be riding alone There was a big rock there to break my fall. As you can hear, spirits were still quite high. <sighs> my mirror got dirty. As we all know, bad riding makes good video. Okay, let's, uh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> my foot's on the top here. Hey, traction, starting up. Just stand up and go. <laughs> Probably straight now. Ligurien on the mighty Super 10 would be the last of our group to try and make it through. And he is not shy with that throttle. But those logs were slippery. Lots of hands to lend a hand. We all made it through and there was one last issue. There was a 1200 GS that wouldn't start so we plugged it into our jumper cable system to see if that would help which sadly it didn't so we were on our way the GPS did not lie and there was more mud ahead okay so quoi la route ici mes amis dans le milieu <laughs> there certainly was no shortage of mud you can see the bikes on the right this was not a side stand friendly environment some of the bikes were just stuck standing upright. Everyone was feeling a little worn right about now because there was a lot of pushing and pulling going on. And despite it being early in the spring, it was warm and humid and everybody was working up a real good sweat. Just stay in your groove, buddy. Yeah. Stay in your groove, baby. 
nobody was making it through this section without some help. And once again, probably staying in the middle was the best plan because the sides were trouble. Fais pas fret pas tout. Comment hein mouiller? Toutes les ensembles sont comment être fatigué pas mal. Chris actually had pretty good success just going right down the middle. Ligurien decided to try and follow Chris's example and head straight through the middle. And if you're gonna get stuck, you might as well sound good doing it. I decided to go right down the middle, but it was getting nicely chewed up and I didn't get too far before I was stuck and spinning. A rider from another team gave me a little tug and then it was just about trying to keep whatever tiny bit of momentum I had going. I was getting a little tired myself because while this is all going on, of course, you're trying to push with your legs. You're not just sitting on the bike. I could see Dave up ahead standing on the side of the trail and he was looking a little worse for wear. I'm getting there. I think we need a break after this. Sorry? I think we need a break after this. I'm out of water too. That's no good. I got 500 mLs, so that's it. I'd already sucked down two liters and it was only halfway through the day. Okay. And as you can see, there was still a lot of mud up ahead. Okay, we're recording now, Dave. Okay, are you sure we're recording now? All right. So? Well, we've been through a bit of mud. You said you were going to throw up? Yes, I nearly threw up, dragging out 20 other bikes of another team. Yeah, the uh, team's doing really well for each other. Yeah. Considering we've only met each other for the first time today a lot. Yeah. So it's doing really well. People say online dating doesn't work. Yeah, and it's, it does. I mean, if you do, <laughs> all you need is a, is a crotch chamois like Chris has got. <laughs> Ça coule pas mon affaire. Lui, il reste à l'intérieur de la moteur. en dedans, c'est bon. C'est tout ce que tu demandes de ton moto. Ouais. Il y a des gros, il y a des mouches. That's good. You just see a big. Jason. It's a perfect ride to really test this thing. You made it across. You were the first one across without stopping. Yeah. Just a little bit of confidence. You know why? Because you weren't wearing your helmet. Yeah. My ass was in the back of it. So you knew you couldn't fall. Joe. Back in the saddle after the a saddle. long absence. This is actually my training run. So. You actually broke your skid plate on the highway getting here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not even sure what happened there. I guess all my maintenance was, was for not. So. Yeah, you said you were going to check the oil, you said this morning. Yeah. Well, I, I took it out of the cabana. That was where my maintenance <laughs> ended. <laughs> JP! Uh, I need to empty my mud scoop. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. It's, JP's uh, got to get home and put this all in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how's the 1200 doing? Hey, damn. That's a big bike for this ride in mud. Yeah, I can tell you in the logs, that was pretty fun. I saw you pick it up by yourself twice on that last stretch. Oh, damn. It was heavy. <laughs> you got a huge fly on your face. Or is that on Do the I? Lens? Like many flies. I can tell you when you hit a rock at the bottom of the... Of the the ditch, rut? When you, when you hit a rock yeah. at the bottom of the ditch there, it's pretty, it stopped right there. Did you make a nice noise? <laughs> I was like, <"Rrr!"> <laughs> <laughs> Ivan! Very good. We had to send you back. We had to send you back to, to pick up okay. the stragglers. It was okay, I was rested. You were rested. I was waiting. Uh, Camera was rolling. Your bike looks pretty clean. It's only this side, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a kind of cheating, I guess, on the small bikes. Uh, and according to you, it's bikes. easy all the way out? Easier, I yes, it will be positive here. It's easier. Let's no, say. That was a guarantee. I just heard guarantee? I guarantee it's easier on the way out. Okay. All right. That's what I heard. And the video will back me up. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not, I'll pay a first round of beer. No, in post editing. Well, we'll should we get rolling or should we hang out here till they eat us? Yeah. Let's get out. Oh, let's get out of this. Air movement. All right, let's go. 
So as you heard, we had not only sent back some of the fresher guys to help out with the, the guys who were a little more fatigued, we'd also sent some guys farther ahead to see when this trail actually was going to dump us out somewhere. But the trail wasn't done with us yet. Here you can see Serge getting spit off the big 1200, but he got right back up and back on the gas. And just kept on going. Keep going. Bottom of the hill is the road. We were almost out. All right, Mark. Here comes Mark on the Super 10. He should. He crossed those first logs. It was unbelievable. Yeah. He just flew across those things on that thing. I couldn't believe it. Oh. Whoa! Right, Someone left some rubber. Traction control off. <sighs> what a day, what a day. Are we almost there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> we were in fact getting pretty close to the end of this section of the trail. We could see on the GPS screens that there was an actual road up ahead. And given the fact that everybody had sucked down most of their water, uh, we were really looking forward to getting out of here and being able to resupply. At this stage in the game, as you see that bike you just pushed climbing that hill, you're just willing it with your mind not to get stuck because you just don't want to spend any more time pulling on it. That guy is a good rider on that big bike, Jesus. You know people are getting tired when they fall, even on a relatively easy section, as we see Ivan go down here. We had made it through yet another section and took another break. We could see from the GPS we were getting tantalizingly close to getting to the road. Dave, I love your parking. It's getting better and better. Aren't you selling this bike Chris, in a week? Chris parks it. Oh, Chris, yeah, that's Chris parking. <laughs> Chris had ridden Dave's bike up that last little bit to give uh, Dave a moment to compose himself. Here we are riding along with Mark on the Super 10. You can see by the, the images here as we go past Joe. And then a little later, there's Serge. The 1200 on its side once again. And a little farther up, JP taking a break. That uh, it was time to get out of the woods and uh, get some air moving over our bodies because we were sweating like dogs. And finally, Jason arrived with good news. How far did you go? Because there's a gray road right here at 200 meters going left to right. There's a gray road at 200 meters going left to right. Well, you want maybe you. Yeah, this part's okay. What's what's up here? This isn't bad. No, this is easy if you're not completely beat up. Okay, but it doesn't get worse than you didn't see worse than no, this. No, this is good. Well, a little bit, but no. All right, I'm gonna go park at the top of the hill and I'll walk back, I guess. So Jason's report yeah. was that we had about another 200 meters of this easy trail, and then we were gonna be dumped out on the road. So all we needed to do now was get everybody up that last hill and we would literally be out of the woods Holy shit. the last hill however was going to take some doing holy shit okay I, I see there's another mud hole here and I gotta say I love this sequence of Dave chewing his way up this hill especially the ending I love how Dave just lays there looking up at the sky. Then he reaches over to kill the motor and back for another rest. I was on comms with Jason and made the decision that uh, 
he needed to get Dave's bike Ooh. out of there and give Dave a moment. All right, Jason, we get this this thing up. I think you hop on. All right. Super Dave, you look like I feel. <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm just exhausted. Okay, uh, Jason's going to take it through this muddy pot. Okay? Oh, this is a fun one to... <laughs> Out of you. <sighs> Dave had gone from al dente to fully oh. overcooked noodle at this point, so uh, I think uh, it was a smart move on our part to just say, hey, you know what, just oh, park oh, it, oh. we'll get your bike out of there. Dave was smart enough to uh, agree with us and just let us get his bike down the trail. The team was working together though. The guys on the lighter bikes who were having an easier time were spending just as much energy in the end because they were helping the guys on the big bikes through the tough spots. Then finally, it was there. A real road, just as promised by the GPS. I think it's safe to say that as we each came down that gentle slope to a real road, there was a genuine feeling of relief. The next order of business was to get some liquids. Everybody had burned through quite a bit of their personal supply. So once again, the GPS was leading us away until we saw it. As we say in Quebec, a dépanneur, a corner store. I'm wondering what the uh, staff thought as all of us stumbled in there like a man crawling out of the desert. The trail had taken a toll on machine as well and Joe's bike was leaking oil. Start the engine uh -oh. and see if it leaks. Aren't you a mechanic? <laughs> Mark, your bike is leaving a nice... I left a dump. Your bike took a dump and still got a lot in there. Where is it going? You bought a burrito? Peanut butter and oh, jam. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> Custom? <laughs> Might need a little wash. Oh. <laughs> JP, how you feeling? Uh, Got some juice uh, back in yet? <laughs> Mm -hmm. You're hydrating. Yeah. Yeah. You were down to 135 pounds there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back up. <laughs> Little side stand manglage. <laughs> Joe actually cleaned his front sprocket in there. <laughs> That's special mud. This is this packed is a in BMW there. flaw though because this hose is chafing on this panel. That's why it, it nothing, it. nothing worse than hose chafing. Design. Quite a few of the bikes seem to have uh, minor damage. Joe's bike, it looked like an oil line had just been chafing against the side panel and there was a little tricklage. You got dirt on your head. I got dirt everywhere. <laughs> I think there's some here too. Yes, on the inside. <laughs> Dave, are you a human being again? Feeling more human. Yeah? Yeah, just marginally. Marginally? Marginally more human. Mm. I think since I've been in this parking lot, I've drank two liters. I think I've sweated one. Probably taken on board three. Yeah, it's good. This Super Tenere did super well. So it's just the club the uh, Super Ten, he said. Right. Yes. yes okay. Ten. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So who's going where? Trail. So after our you break, it was time today? to do a little survey trail. and find trail. out which one of the boys was going to continue trail, trail, trail. on the trail and who Joe, was going to head directly to lunch? lunch. You going on the trail? All right. So at this point, we'd split up into two groups. Dave, JP, uh, and Joe were uh, heading off to lunch. And the rest of us were going to try and do a little more of the route. At this point, we were so far behind, I don't think there was really any chance that we were going to complete the entire event. 
but we decided we might at least want to complete the morning ride, even if it did take us till four o'clock in the afternoon. I came pretty close myself to not going forward with the ride and actually doing the administrative ride over to the lunch spot. I had regained some energy at our little rest stop, but I, I knew my reserves were pretty depleted at this point. And for the rest of the guys who decided not to continue, I can only say, you know, you've got to ride your own ride and not be subject to peer pressure. You know, I think there's a lot of that in the motorcycling community, especially with the off-road thing, the whole, you know, hey, come on, don't be a wimp, suck it up, give it a shot. And we do that to a certain extent in our group, but I think it's because we know that all the guys that we ride with are, uh, are capable enough and confident enough to make that decision to not do things that they're not comfortable with. And as you can see, there was a little bit of road riding to be done right after our little break. And then once again, we were back on the trail. To continue the success we were having with the no dust, it started raining again. And this section of trail was actually pretty soupy. Once again, this is another trail I think we'd been down a few times before on other events and on some of our weekend rides. Despite the fact we were down a few bikes, we fell into our original formation with Chris in the lead. And I was in the back, once again, tail end Charlie. I think everybody was just so happy that we were actually moving. You know, we weren't just standing around pulling and sloshing and spinning. Here we see uh, Mark on the Super 10. I think just having that airflow over our bodies was just doing us a world of good. And morale was pretty high at this point. Eventually the trail got a little more challenging and there were some pretty decent hill climbs. Oh, beauty. Of course your biggest fear on these hill climbs is that the guy in front of you doesn't quite make it and then you gotta stop. And you can see it was raining a few minutes ago and yet this section of the trail is bone dry. This route even took us past the little sand pit that you've seen in a lot of our other videos. Even with about six GPS's rolling, we still had the occasional navigational error. And here, there was a little bit of discussion on whether or not we should be going left here or not. And uh, Chris up front made the command decision to go left. That turned out to be a little off the track, so we had a little powwow and decided that there must be something just a little farther ahead that veered off to the left. We got back on track on a really kind of rocky trail, and then a few minutes later we ended up having another little powwow. And eventually, this led us to another trail, which I think I'd been down once quite a long time ago. And this had some really good hill climbs, so I'm here behind Mark on the Super 10. He gives it a good try, gets a little sideways, because of course someone else is uh, blocking the trail. And at this point you got a choice, are you going to try and dig a hole? Are you going to wait for a bunch of guys to show up and try to get you rolling? Or do you do what Mark did and just turn around? Then it was my turn. And I was pretty happy with that because I was really running low on juice and I really wasn't in the mood to start a big wrestle fest trying to get that 800 up the hill. This was kind of a neat section where we came across this road where the gravel was really white. And then it veered off up the hill. In the back of my mind at this point, I'm just hoping we don't run into another one of these monster mud sections. 
because I was really feeling that I didn't have a lot of surplus energy to go around. I think the reserves had been pretty depleted. Some of the fitter guys on the smaller bikes were certainly probably not as worn out as I was. So I was just hoping the trail was going to stay nice and easy until we popped back out onto a main road again. I recognized this section of the trail and I did know that not far from here was a really rough section that we'd done on our own a few times that had a lot of muck and stuff and uh, I was thinking that might just be the end of me for today's ride and then all of a sudden I could see the headlights coming back so I, I think we were actually not supposed to go this way. I have a feeling Chris thought we were going that way. I guess we're not doing the slime pit. I guess that's someone's land. It turned out that that really rough section not far from here wasn't on the route so I was pretty happy about that at this point. But of course the organizers weren't going to let us get off this easy so as we forged ahead it started getting a little muddier, it started raining again and up ahead I could see the boys congregating and that usually means that they're all waiting their turn to go through an obstacle. There was Serge on the 1200 trying to chew his way up this little hill. Yay, mud! The boys on the Super 10s didn't seem too excited so Ligurien went to the right and Mark went to the left. I had the luxury of watching both of them and then I decided to go to the right. But it wasn't long before there was another little obstacle, just this little bypass of a muddy section. And I think a combination of the diagonal route and a little bit of fatigue, Serge spun and the 1200 went down. So he did a little trail maintenance. I have a feeling Serge probably just would have steamrollered right through this obstacle earlier in the day, but even someone as strong as he is was feeling a little worn down. I'm not sure how many times he picked up that 1200 so far on this ride. I stayed dismounted because I want to get a good shot of the black Super 10 cruising through there, and as you can see, Ligurien made short work of it and then it was my turn and I don't know I botched it went to stick out my foot there was nothing there except air I was kind of pinned under there for a moment managed to wiggle free I looked at that bike and thought should I try to bow hunk it and lift it up by myself but it was far too late in the day for that so I called for the cavalry and in short order, Jason arrived on the 690 to lend me a hand. Hello. He jumped right in. I think he could see that I was pretty worn out. And Jason is a lot bigger, younger, and stronger. So he took the main position. Up ahead, the Super 10 had come up to our next obstacle. With typical flare, plenty of throttle was used. Thank you, sir. I gotta say, at this point, I was pretty happy not to be out here alone. I'm not sure how much farther I would have gotten if I had to pick up the bike myself every time it fell over. I got to the mud hole and when I couldn't raise Chris on comms because I think he had his helmet off we relied on some hand signals. When it comes to an obstacle like this so not too bad in the middle. I'm of two minds. If you're the first guy to get there and you just forge ahead and you don't have any preconceived notions of what's going on in there sometimes that actually works quite well. If you sit there and watch five guys try to go through an obstacle and they get stuck and there's bumps and lumps in there. In some ways it can kind of psych you out a bit. 
But in this case, at this point, I didn't want to fall down in that water, so I went very gently. I was trying not to spin and dig a hole, and with a little tug from Chris and a lot of clutch abuse, managed to make it up there without any drama. The guys were still smiling, but I could see that there was a lot less chatter than there had been in the morning. So people were in energy conservation mode. And then, of all things, I got a phone call. Part of the deal with the Senna intercom is that it interfaces with your phone, and you actually can receive phone calls as long as there's cell reception. We'll meet you there, my friend. We'll be a while, yeah? Jokingly told them we'd be there in five minutes, but then uh, gave them a more realistic time appreciation. It seems that Joe, JP, and Dave had actually just gotten to the lunchtime spot, and I think the lunch guys were trying to close up because everyone else was already gone. Keep an eye on the top of your screen. Serge got pretty sideways there on the 1200 GS and managed to save it. And the trail was getting a lot muddier and I was starting to have flashbacks of this morning. I was really hoping we weren't going to end up in another really long mud section where we were going to have to do a lot of pulling and pushing. Ivan up ahead was making good progress and then it was Serge's time to get up this little hill and as you can see it was slippery enough he could barely get started. And the adventure was down again. Slowly. <laughs> but Serge was still going strong for a guy who'd picked up that big adventure I don't know how many times. It also goes to show you these bikes can take a fair amount of abuse. I'm sure that uh, Serge's 1200 GS has been on the ground more in one day than most GS's would see in a lifetime. And this was pretty slippery. You can see Mark on the Super 10 yeah, that's chewing his way up Holy the next shit. little section. Same ex exact amount of name shows que l'autre, eh? Le petit rush le sauvé. I was last and I really didn't want to fall over and force one of my compatriots to come back and help me pick up the bike again so I decided to go really slowly and kind of walk the bike through the section. Despite everything that had happened and the fact that our group had kind of split into two, in the back of my mind I was already seeing today as a success because I knew once we were sitting around that table having a few beers there was going to be a lot to talk about and that this ride would go down in awesome players history as a very nice. memorable one with my eye on the GPS I could see we didn't have too far to go and then I did one of those nice slow-mo tip overs we were a little farther behind the main group but one of the nice things about having intercom is you can let them know you're coming. And I was uh, taking this bypass to the right with some big tree roots and stuff and managed to bounce my way through. A lot of guys take their mirrors off when they go off-roading. I like to have a mirror so I can easily keep track of what's going on behind me. And I could see that uh, the big Super 10 was stuck. And I think this was just a case of having a little less ground clearance than the 800 GS. When I first saw the Super Teneres in the morning, I noticed they didn't have a lot of ground clearance and you could just tell this bike was a big heavy beast. And I gotta say, I was really impressed with where these Yamahas had gone today. In no small part due to the skill of the riders and their ability to just twist the loud pipe when it was necessary. I got a phone call here from the boys, but uh, reception was pretty spotty in this section, so they dropped out. We couldn't actually budge it off the route, so we decided to just tip the bike down on its side to get it out of the hole. 
and drag the butt around. We got the bike upright, and this time, when the phone rang, I got a connection, and it was actually Chris because we were out of intercom range, and I was able to let him know we'd be there shortly. We're making it through. We'll be there in two minutes. Oh! <laughs> Isn't there something inherently satisfying in getting a vehicle unstuck and seeing it on its way? Yeah. The phone rang yet again. It was Super Dave and the boys. We're actually just getting out of this trail and then we are heading on the highway. Why, do you want to meet earlier or what? The new plan was for us to head right to the restaurant. Okay, well, you know what? Let us get out of this trail. We'll call you because maybe we'll, maybe you should head south instead of us heading north. All right. When I crested this muddy hill, I could see a couple of the boys standing trailside, which usually meant that they were expecting some trouble. I stayed to the left as directed and was doing all right. And then I could see there was something had happened here. The trail was all torn up and I needed a little bit of a push. I could see uh, Serge was taking a break. So I have a feeling I missed a little excitement. So we gotta call Dave because I guess they're wondering if they can wrap up there. So as soon as we get out of here, we should phone him. The new plan was to forget going to the lunch spot and go straight to the dinner spot, which was where we would all meet for supper as well as the awards presentations and the raffles and all that good stuff. The Garmin screen at this point was showing us that we were tantalizingly close to popping out of the woods onto a real road, but there would still be a few little exciting moments left. I was following Serge at this point on the 1200 adventure, and it was greasy. Whoa! And once again, the adventure was on its side, and before any of us could get there, Serge Iron Man, the big GS up all by himself and mounted up and off we went without barely losing any time at all. And for the second time today, I couldn't believe how excited I was that the trail was spilling us out onto a road, one more mud hole to navigate and I did not want to end the day in spectacular fashion. I made it through without much fanfare. Everybody was pretty stoked, I think, to be done for the day. Le Gourien was actually the last man out of the woods, and much more of a showman than I, he decided to do it with style. And that would be the last dirt a tire would throw from the awesome players today. We had connected up with the Super Dave, JP, and Joe and told them that we were going to go straight to La Chute to the restaurant. So all we had to do now was sit tight for about a half an hour, follow the arrow on the GPS, and a cold beer was awaiting us all. The clouds opened up, but uh, a little rain wasn't gonna dampen our enthusiasm at this point. And then we found ourselves in beautiful downtown La Chute. I'm so excited, I just can't hide. And that would be the end of the Classique of 2015. To this day, whenever awesome players gather, we will still talk about the obstacle we call the logs and how much time we spent there. <laughs> Inside, we were joined by JP, Super Dave and Joe headed home. Ivan, it was great to meet. Well, Jason's one of the old hands. And of course, Le Gourien and Serge, it was fantastic to ride with them for the first time. Chris, eh, Chris is Chris. Of course, the final thank you has to go out 
to all the organizers of the ninth annual Classique, as well as all the sponsors that made it possible. I can't even imagine the amount of effort that goes into making an event of this scale, and every year it gets bigger and bigger. And if anyone has made it to the end of this long, long video, hit the like button if you liked it, subscribe if you want to be kept up to date on all of our new video releases. And if you have any questions at all, drop us a comment here on YouTube or head over to our Facebook page or head over to awesomeplayers.com and there you can see our contact information if you want to drop us an email. And you can also now order stickers from our website. And so ends another adventure of the Awesome Players Off-Road Motorcycle Club.